Hello everybody, this is Purge, bringing you guys a replay commentary. Uh, this was a ability draft game that I played off stream the other day. So unfortunately you're not going to be able to see the uh, the actual draft that I go in. But um, I, I figured I'd take this opportunity to talk about a game that was pretty fun. And also talk a lot about ability draft. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a little sniffling right now for some reason. It's like allergies or something. Um, everybody pretty much knows that I like ability draft a lot. Um, it's, it's kind of been like my non-Dota Dota game for a while uh for a long time it was that was gem t but lately it's been i prefer to play ability draft in moments where i don't really feel like playing regular dota okay um and as such, I, I certainly like making videos um, about it and playing it. Um, last night I played a couple ability drafts as well. They were pretty fun. Um, but none of those I don't think were that worth making videos out of. I had some, some bad games, some good games. Um, but some of the stuff that you guys need to keep in mind when you play ability draft is... Let's, uh, let's we'll do, try to do like a pseudo guide from the top of my head. Um, the most obvious one is um, making sure that your combo, that your abilities... Um, combo together in a nice way that's pretty important um for me this game i have earthshaker's aftershock that means every time i cast a spell it does an aoe stun and damages i've got uh, static remnant which does a delayed aoe nuke nearby and has a low 3.5 second cooldown i've got soul assumption which is a single target nuke on a four second cooldown and then i've also got tinker's rearm so my build is pretty sick here uh the reason being that i can essentially permanently stun somebody if i have enough mana to continuously do things like rearm um, so the the skill that I got first when I drafted was Aftershock, and then I got Rearm, and then I finished up with uh, Static Remnant and Soul Assumption. The reason I'm grabbing Static Remnant here is because the other two abilities are not very good by themselves, and at least Static Remnant will do damage for a low 100 mana. If I get Soul Assumption level 1, it does slightly more damage, but the downside is that it costs way more mana, and um, it also has a lot of requirements. It's also not AoE, so... Uh, remnant makes a lot more sense. The other cool thing about Remnant and Aftershock comboing is that Static Remnant it doesn't explode right away. It takes maybe like, I don't know, half a second, one second, something like that after it uh, is casted for it to blow up. So comboed with Aftershock, if I just cast Static Remnant, it does an AoE stun, which provides time for Static Remnant to blow up. So that was one of the cool things about my combo here. Man, I am just really, I must have really got some, some uh, allergy allergens when I was outside walking the dog. So, um, ability draft things to keep in mind is, uh, what are your hero's stats like? Um, Ursh or Elder Titan, for example, has really high strength gain, and his other stat gains are not very good. A 1.8 for agility is just mediocre, and 1.6 for int is pretty bad. So, if I want to cast a lot of spells, I have to consider adjusting my build to make up for that fact that I will need more mana. So, to do so, um, because of uh, my mana needs in mind, and that I can basically cast rearm in these spells a lot, I will need to ensure that I cover that in a way. So, for example, um, something like Arcane Boots would be good. Something like Soul Ring would be really good as well, because that would allow me to rearm and push it more often, because every time I rearm, then I can use uh, Soul Ring. But with that said, I don't really want to get Arcane Boots, because rearm is really good with Boots of Travel. That's why Tinker always buys it, because it lets you rearm the Boots of Travel and move around the map really rapidly. So in that way, there's no reason that I'm going to get Arcane Boots. Uh, Soul Ring is definitely a good item, though. Um, this game I'm supporting, um, I find that in a lot of ability draft games I'm kind of forced to support because the average player does not a support, doesn't want to support, and doesn't want to buy wards, that kind of a thing, so just kind of stuck with it. Um, I also didn't have uh, early boots, which is unfortunate, and uh, I would have loved to have some like Orb of Venom, I think that would have been really good, but unfortunately I'm pretty much forced to uh, try to help the clink zone here. They do have a lot of inv invis heroes, so it felt kind of hard for me to actually contribute that much. Something like a Stout Shield would have been really nice too. Just to give myself some uh, trade advantage against these guys. So Elder Titan's definitely not bad at trading, but... See, he ran just a little bit too far here for my Remnant to matter. Did not anticipate the uh, third hero being here. Although, what I did stupidly was that... I forgot that the Earthshaker was the guy that was roaming in the lane. The Visage was roaming, actually. So we actually got pretty wrecked here. With that said, it's not too surprising that my build kind of sucks right now. Because of the fact that 
Um, level 1 Aftershock is not a huge amount of damage. It's, it's actually very good, I would say. Um, it's about a level 1 nuke, um, and the stun duration is not good, though. So, between these two abilities, what I can do is pretty, pretty straightforward, I guess. I was really hoping that guy would die, but he did not there. Maybe if I had, like, an Orb of Venom or something. Um, again, I also tanked a lot of Creep Wave and the Warlock as well, um, between Snake. I don't know why he has Chaos Strike. That's really, really stupid. There's no reason he shouldn't have Overpower here. Um... In fact, I remember criticizing this guy for him getting Arcane Boots. Uh, this is a good example of what not to do. So, the, if we look at this guy's mana cost, he has Mystic Snake every 11 seconds. He's got an ultimate on a really long cooldown. He's got a passive here. And he's got Overpower, which he can cast every 10 seconds. By getting Arcane Boots, this guy can cast things like Mystic Snake more often. But the downside is that he's invested far more money into mana regen than he needs. And because he can right-click very fast with Overpower, and he gets a crit based on his damage, it would make a lot more sense for him if he actually um, went something like Phase Boots or phase boots or Treads. That way he could make use of his right-click right -click, uh, passives. He's, he's purchased too much mana regen, and as a result, that's money he could have spent in other ways to make his hero stronger. So that's really important when you're... Um, item building heroes like skill builds alone are really difficult to do but if your item build doesn't correctly match what your hero needs and where the strengths could be then you're not playing your hero as strong as it could be um, i'm doing a gank here because my lane felt really really hard so what i did was i smoked around and i'm waiting for him to come up a little too far and then when the at the right moment i'm going to actually barely ended up getting um aftershock range there I felt kind of dead, because I, I think I saw a hero like, rotating this way, so I wasn't surprised at all that I ended up dying. Um, sucks that our, we lost the, the Venomancer as well. But mixing your item builds as well as your skill to your skill builds in, the, in a correct way is very difficult uh, to do in a lot of times. Let's take uh, Venomancer, for example. He is gone for 3 points in Fury Swipes, 2 points in Gravekeepers, and he has 0 points in Mana Shield. I would argue that he should get at least 1 point in Mana Shield in the laning stage because he has literally no need for mana. So him having Mana Shield only gives him survivability, basically. Which I don't think is a bad thing for him to do. Um, you could maybe argue that it's not worth it over an extra point of Gravekeeper's Cloak, but I, I would probably say that I, I think it's worth it. The other thing I would say is... Well, first, uh, watch me do this sick double combo. The reason I'm attacking this guy is because he has... Um, less magic resistance. Ooh, I was not happy about taking that tower hit. I think I'm gonna die to Fatal. Yeah, I should have walked in the Ancient there, knowing that Fatal Bonds would get me killed. But this guy, because he has... Oops, this is clicking on somebody else. Because he has Fury Swipes, which is based on how many additional attacks you do, I would have felt like having uh, Power Treads would have been a lot better on Venomancer in this case. On top of the fact that if he's on Strength Treads, for example, he has more survivability anyways, and it would make something like Gravekeeper's Cloak uh, a lot better. He could have possibly salved here. He definitely should have salved when he walked uphill. I think that is pretty clear. He should have a Magic Wand, maybe, especially with Mana Shield. I think that's important because... At least if they cast a lot of spells, it'll eventually give you mana and health. Um, I think that's potentially very good. Um, I don't even think he should have gotten his ulti at 6, to be honest, because him comboing this with his other skills is very difficult to do. It makes more sense if he just focuses on being able to use fairy swipes and stuff like that. Um, I'm continuing to roam here. Again, um, I'm playing support, and I uh, my, my lane didn't start off in a great way. And they have a lot of difficult-to-kill heroes. They had a lot better early game um, abilities than we did, and that's another important thing. So you have to consider... Um, where your hero can go, are they going to be farm independent, and uh, there's also the the fact that you have to consider, um, are, are you going to be strong in the laning stage, are they going to have a laning advantage, because sometimes, even if you have the better builds, it doesn't matter if you just get outlaned, period. So, sometimes it's very important that you focus on laning prowess. Other times, maybe you focus too much on that. When I played, uh, again, recently I got Necrophos, and my perks, or my skills that I went for, I went for Poison Sting on Venom, because that skill had just amazing harass. I've had it before, and it like won me the leaning stage so hard that I just basically won the game. And then I also got Arcane Bolt, uh, Skyrath Mage's first ability, very good lane harass. And then for my third skill, it was something like not super related, but it basically... Um, ultimately, I, I tried to go offlane, and I was against heroes that had actual disables and slows. They had Gale and... 
um, Concussive Shot, and Luna Aura, and they just kind of wrecked me because my hero had bad base stats. So I thought all I picked, drafted all these skills thinking like, oh, I need good lane advantage. But in reality, all I did was hurt myself because I grabbed lane harass, and then I was laning in a situation where I was in a 1v2 on a hero that has atrocious movement speed, pretty darn low base armor, and a really bad animation. So I basically just got completely outplayed. Um, if I had any disable, I might have been able to defend myself, but basically I just kept chain feeding, is what happened. So it did not go so well. So it's very important that you balance out not just um, the items, but also the skills. That's why that's what makes ability draft so weird. Is that every game is like you're you're playing a brand new hero that nobody's played before, unless you're boring and you have the same skills. So this guy going drum ultimately, I think, is okay because um, then he's gonna be able to chase really well. That's one good thing about the phase here, is that he's gonna be able to catch up to enemies a little bit more rapidly. Oh, nice, he got the fidge off here. Fortunately, that guy didn't perfectly attack move, so Sven was able to get away. That was a very interesting ultimate. He is walking way too far up. What am I doing? Hey, I TP to this too, cool. I do have a soul ring now, meaning that I can cast spells a lot more often. Um, I grabbed a point soul assumption here, um, just because it gives me another way to cast Aftershock if I really want to. It's, again, it's a very mana expensive, but it does give me a way to do that. One, one thing to point, by the way, um, my int gain is really bad on this hero, but my starting int was really high. The fact that I already have 28 int is huge. So, ultimately not the worst hero. I'm still trying to catch up a little bit. I don't know, did I buy that word? I don't remember. This guy looks dead. What did he have again? Oh yeah, I had Earthshock, I remember now. Bounty Hunter had pretty good skills. Um, Cleave, Gale, Chaos Strike. Uh, the I don't think it's ever worth getting Ursa ultimate. Almost never. It's almost never worth getting it if you aren't... Um, if you don't also have Fury Swipes, so I, I don't like his pick up there, because it's basically like a pseudo-invulnerability, but it only lasts like less than two seconds. It's really not good, in my opinion. What this Bounty Hunter should have done, probably, is roamed. Um, he's got two abilities that are very good at getting kills, but not really. I mean, he's also got Cleave, so Cleave is good at farming, but he was thinking too much about items. Happens a lot too sometimes that people just focus way too much on like, oh, I need items to be effective. And there are definitely some builds that are like that. Like if we look at the scoreboard, let's see, oops, it doesn't work that way anymore. Let's see which builds need items to be effective. Mine is sort of like that. I don't need a lot. I can definitely chain stun a little bit. I just need like a soul ring and I can kind of chain stun the crap out of people. Um, this guy's build sort of needs items to be effective because his hero is really slow, but he does have pretty good right click. Ursa's build, he just needs Arcane Boots, and he can cast his three spells a lot. He was really pissed that I took Rearm, by the way. He was like, it's obvious I was going for Rearm, guys. And it's like, okay, so you're just building Tinker then? Is that is that what I was supposed to realize? His first three skills are good. I really, I don't like his ultimate. I don't think that was necessary. It doesn't really fit with those other ones. Because it requires him to have items that give him carry potential, basically. And the Medusa's build is extremely boring. She's basically Medusa with Venno stuff, which is ultimately... Not bad, like this is good. Once she hits 25 as well, and the split shot uses modifiers, she's going to be applying poison sting to everybody. And she can also farm pretty fast. The kind of weird part is that maybe she'd farm faster with split shot over Plague Wards, but that's probably not true. Plague Wards actually does really accelerate you in terms of farm. So what I'm basically doing right at the, these points is I'm trying to affect the game in a positive way because I know that we're not very good at team fighting and ganking. So instead what I want to do is focus on pushing lanes because if I push lanes, especially with the tier 1 towers gone, like, if Creep Wave's here, and I push it all the way to here, I get, like, three or four Creep Waves, and that's a ton of gold advantage to me. And by doing that, it gets me levels, it gives me gold, and it helps me transition into other roles, Observer Wards, things like that. Because I'm pretty sure I was the only one to buy wards for my team. Just got tracked. And track is kind of scary, too, because it means my opponents see me. If I die and feed too much, I can uh, very easily get killed and uh, ganked, and if that happens too much, then my opponents get really far ahead, and then oftentimes the game kind of snowballs. Track is actually a pretty high win rate in ability draft. So I kind of want to just stay in the immediate area of my teammates until the track runs out, that way they don't necessarily know where I'm going. Because if I like roam all the way top, or move all the way top, and they see me moving, then they're uh, going to react accordingly. I don't know why I'm saying oh, items. All right, I got a bottle as well. A uh, very common item to have on Tinker, just because it helps you get a little bit more regen. Give him some bottle regen here. He's trying to catch this guy. 
I'm actually very surprised he went by the shrine. I guess I was kind of lucky here. It's the first time I cast rearm, I think. Um, I ended up canceling it. I shouldn't have in, in retrospect because um, he was going to die with that third spell. I could have let that channel just to reset my cooldowns, like uh, Soul Ring, for example. And that's what's so cool about Rearm is that it just resets your Soul Ring. So basically every time I Rearm, I actually gain 50 mana. I, I, I didn't mean to drag it back in. That was a big mistake, I think. What? I'm, I'm confused. Looks like I'm out of dust as well. But once I get these all maxed out, um, I'm going to be doing a lot more AoE damage. And then I kind of just have to be fast is one thing. Having high movement speed is good because then I can kind of run with people and continue to cast these combos. Another important thing is to look at how your abilities scale. This is something that people take for granted in a lot of Dota games because they're so used to how, they're built, they're, how they always scale their hero. Fortunately, he uh, juked me a little bit here. The drum usage there definitely made a big difference, though. So get another kill. All good. It's very common for uh, static remnants to do that. But pretty easy for me to farm waves. Um, kind of want to push this lane out. I'm um, also, of course, again, thinking about Boots of Travel as one of my items. Uh, Blink Dagger is also really, really good when you have Aftershock builds, just because it, it gives you a pretty easy chance to initiate and chain stun somebody. I mean, it's really no, not that different than how Urshika works, right? You jump in and you chain stun somebody three times in a row. Wow, that guy died really easy. So you have, yeah, he's in chain total. This guy's build is pretty good. I actually liked it a lot. Was able to get that kill with just two spells. Being a little mana drained here. Thinking about running in. Fortunately, I uh, my dust ran out here. Mystic Snake draining the rest of my mana. This is just a really bad place to be in. I think I misclicked or something there. I don't quite remember, but I'm quite dead at this point. I really needed to carry dust. If I had a dust there, I think we would have been able to get a kill. Again, if we look at this guy's build, his items are just so weird. I kind of get the force staff. I don't blame him too much for that, but he's he's focusing so much on Mystic Snake, and I, I kind of feel like I don't know, maybe it's fine to get Mystic Snake here, I guess, but he certainly shouldn't have he certainly should have something like Phase Boots. Having Wraith Band as well, this is uh, the whole reason he has this is because he wants to get, like, so this is good for farming, but the um, whole reason he has this is because he wants to make a Halberd. And a lot of times, and this happens all the time actually, players that grab uh, some kind of right-click skill, they think like, I have a right-click skill, I have to get range. They don't get very creative in thinking about what would actually make their hero better, kind of, if that makes sense. So I kind of realized that I had to cancel my rearm if I wanted to continue stunning because as soon as he gets away from me, then I'm not going to be able to catch him anymore. I'm going to probably, I think I passed into Roche here to pop my invis. Got to wait two seconds to make sure that I go invisible, that way they don't see me coming, and then I'm going to go look for a kill. So my kill potential is, uh, is not quite there yet, but I can definitely combo with somebody else to secure a kill. Worked out pretty good. I mean, I can stun somebody for one, two, three, maybe four, four sets. So that's like six seconds or something. It's very good. I messed up using that a little bit late. I also dusted late too. So I think if for for Warlock's example, going fast Hurricane Pike, yeah, it gives you 13 int, and yeah, it's a four staff, which is gonna help him get around. But if this guy just went like phase boots with drum or something like that, and maybe an Aquila. And even afterwards when Hurricane Pike, sure, go ahead. But the the way that he built it is just so so not good. And in fact, when you use this on somebody, it gives you an attack speed increase. That's a waste because Overpower also uh, does that for you. It's 
So really, this guy's Hurricane Pike is just genuinely pretty bad. It just doesn't do that much. I messed up really bad wanding there. I got a lot more mana drained. That snake actually wrecked everybody. So I got my BOTs now, so basically I can play Tinker at this point. Or Shaker Tinker, you know. That one hero. And getting a Blink Dagger as soon as possible is very important. Um, I think I also should have um, bought another Dust, most likely. Um, if you're wondering why I didn't get more points in Rearm, uh, the reason is because the mana cost goes up by a lot. And at this point in the game, um, I felt like I wasn't... Like, uh, casting Rearm fully was not really my priority. Looking back, I feel like this is a mistake because the time to Rearm is 1.5. So that means that I can just about perma-stun somebody at this point. There's probably a little downtime in that if it casts me one and a half seconds and there's an animation just to start the animation, that they'll, they'll, they'll be on stun because this lasts for one and a half seconds. I was trying to relay a bunch of remnants for when the creep wave came or if an invis hero found me. Um, I kind of feel like maybe I should have gotten more rearm, but the other good thing about a soul assumption levels is that it um, just lowers the mana cost every time, so I kind of felt good picking up soul assumption, whereas getting rearm doubles the mana cost, so it's kind of... I think if I, I think looking at it now, I'd probably get a level two rearm pretty fast. And here's my support items that I continue to buy. Another cool thing about BOT is you can TP to the visage birds, so it's very easy for me to actually uh, show up to where my teammates are. But my teammates, as a whole, were kind of sitting around a little bit too much. So here's another uh, example of somebody getting Dragon Lance. Um, it's so common. Players think that they have to get it, kind of. Um, and I get that Veno has lower range, but this item is is kind of like a... The, the range increase is nice. Hurricane Pike is very good for the fact that it helps heroes stay alive, because it's basically like a, a, a force staff that also does some damage that helps you get away from dangerous situations. All very good stuff. Um, but instead, if this guy just goes like Mask of Madness or something, everything kind of changes, in my opinion. Because he's able to attack people, but he doesn't attack that fast. It's not that fast. And and this build, having fear swipes, all works under the function of you having good attack speed. And this guy does not have that because of the items he chose to win, cho uh, chose to go. Either way, I can push towers quite rapidly now, which makes me happy. This is a really dangerous place to rearm, because if they were crossing the river, they could certainly kill me, I think. I'm going to TP down here and push the lane a little bit out, because I'm kind of worried about it uh, being blasted. And now the cool thing is that um, because my uh, spell up is going up a little bit and my static remnant does enough damage, I can use two spells, I believe, at this point to clear creep wave. 260 from Static Remnant, Aftershock twice is 300, so that's, what, 760? I just have to cast uh, Soul Assumption every time to get the second Remnant, or Aftershock, sorry, and uh, I get the damage. This was kind of a mistake. I should have hidden the trees a little bit earlier, but basically I wanted to rearm and then TP home just to get back, and I should have done it in a safe place. I put the Remnant down here to stun. If somebody was watching me, they'd at least be stunned, and the Remnant would blow up, letting me know that somebody was invisible and watching me. So I'm definitely a little bit slow in Tinker, I almost never play him. But continuing to push out side lanes. Um, you can kind of tell that the players I was playing against weren't very great here because of the fact that they weren't ever punishing me for stuff like this. Like if I don't have Blink Dagger yet, they should be anticipating me put TP into lanes like this. Be like, oh, he's going to TP down here to farm the wave because it's safe to do. And if they anticipate that and they're waiting to gank me, and then I show up, then they should just kill me. And they, if they do that a few times, all of a sudden the whole game changes. So I did not get to um, chain stun him perfectly. He uses ultimate, which stops damage, but that's fine. I know he uses stun, so I'm all safe and all. Um, anyways, got my... Like, if anyone else was there with a stun, I certainly would have died there. rearm again. See, they're saying this game is boring, but the reason is because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to create pressure on the map. That's why the game is boring. All they've been doing kind of is standing around 5 on the map the whole time. And in the meantime, I've just been pushing lanes to my heart's content. 
and getting farm. And now that I've got Blink Dagger, every single gank that I do is so much easier. They're actually winning by quite a lot. Uh, but that's mostly just because they're a little bit better passively farming. And because my teammates are just now spreading out to, get, to collect resources. But I think based on the fact that they had so many invis heroes, my team was very scared to to move places, is what happened. A little bit of a mistake there, I needed to wand a little earlier to have spell. And he, he just happened to walk into me. I cast a remnant there because it gives you a little vision, and I thought it would uh, let me see where he was juking to. But picking up that kill was actually massive in terms of gold swing. I get 400, he loses 200. I mean, that's like I feel that feels like that's the first kill that's happened in a very, very, very long time, which is pretty sad. But again, it's kind of just a result of players not doing very much. Teeping on the birds here because I want to chase for this kill. Way here. I meant to reinitiate by blinking in, that's why I made a mistake there. Psyched myself out. Actually, it's so hard. Very scary. I need to cast my spells a little bit better. Again, rearm doesn't guarantee that I get um, a chain stun, so I'm still playing kind of safe. Uh, very common to buy Kaya afterwards. I think a lot of almost all tinkers do this. Um, nobody has really gone Bloodstone on Tinker in a long time. I'm gonna try to save this guy. I did not mean to find two heroes. Ended up saving his life. Stones are a big game winner in ability draft in a lot of cases because they kind of just fix issues, pretty much. Got another kill. And I've got Kaya, so that's 10% less mana spent per, per cast. So I save 20 mana on every rearm, 10 mana on every static remnant, stuff like that. It makes a big difference. And in the same band, I'm still getting a lot of mana regen and um, mana gain from things like um, Soul Ring, for example. But now that I've got level 3 armor, my mana costs go up a lot more. On the bright side, the duration is so low that I can use this, I can fit it into a chain stun very easily. So this is basically my goal now. That said, I still need more mana, mana pool. Um, I certainly could have done something like Bloodstone. Um, I Looking at it now, I feel like it would have been a really good idea, just because I've already got great chain stun. All I really need is mana, and that's all that limits me, but I shouldn't think about Bloodstone much, I guess. I'm checking the range here for Blink Initiation. Very easy kill. Um, cost me a little bit of Soul Ring rotation, but ultimately, yeah, very easy. And I'm just going to hide over here because I don't necessarily want to show. If I cross this, they'll see me with the tower vision. Again, I'm just kind of looking for kills. Out of mana here, unfortunately, so I'm not able to secure the kill. He ends up dying. I don't remember if I died here. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember now. Should have wa I should have thrown my wand in a little bit earlier. I think that would have made a big difference. This guy needed to drop his birds right there. As soon as he summoned them, unfortunately, he did not. Either way, I probably went a little bit too aggressive there, and the Urshaker was standing still, so I took that as a moment of weakness. But in reality, that was just him casting Echo Stomp. I don't know if he did it on purpose to put it over there, but the smart thing was that his passive is his third one, and that doesn't have an animation tied to it, which is why it doesn't look like anything when he casts Echo Stomp. If that was on his like first skill, it would look like his hero is about to cast Fissure, for example. Same for me casting the spell. It probably looks like me throwing my spirit out, and this one is a passive, so it doesn't look like anything. Usually I just kind of move these around based on preference, kind of. This is basically the order that I skilled things, I just didn't move anything. 
Um, Perk-wise, our talent set is, um, you kind of just have to grab them based on what you have, uh, what, what fits your hero. And in a lot of ways, talent trees are really fun for ability draft because they help your hero become something different, which is already what, what the game is, right? Um, so for me, I kind of, um, my, my options were movement speed or health. I felt like health was much better. Movement speed is not bad, but health is a lot better because I just want to be overall more survivable. At the 15 perk, it gives me an option between Astral Spirit, but I don't have that ability, so it's pretty much impossible, right? So it's obvious I'm going to get magic resistance, because as a whole, magic resistance is still going to be useful. I forgot to soaring there. He's pushing me away a little bit here. But he just does like no damage. It's actually, he actually hits so soft. Here's 900 gold wasted in arcane boots that isn't used anymore. He he bought a hurricane pike first. This guy like actually hasn't been a threat in terms of damage like the whole game. It's because he spent so much money. Like is he has top net worth in the whole game, and he doesn't. He's not even threatening in the slightest. It's part partially that's because I can chain stun him all the way. But either way, if you're um, if you're top net worth and that's all you can accomplish. Misuse my man a little bit here. Forgot to slowing again. It's definitely missing a lot of soaring usage. Fortunately, um, I tried to blink stun there, um, but the the fatal bonds interrupted my blink dagger. Fortunately, hit level twenty, so echo stomp damage, which I don't have that perk, so I get seventy attack speed. It's a really good perk, anyways. Sierra has, I would say, pretty good, pretty good talents for ability draft. Again, still kind of some lackings in terms of his agility gain and his armor and his uh, int gain, but as a whole, I was pretty happy. It doesn't really coincide with how my hero becomes strong, is maybe the other thing. Um, because really, I'm just about casting spells. I don't really need to right-click that much. But I could combo it. It's not bad. I was scared if I was going to get stunned here. Um, I could transition, for example, into some kind of like a right-click item like him. Um, my thought was... Um, Orchid, for example, would work pretty well. It gives me mana regen, gives me intelligence, gives me right click, damage, and attack speed, that kind of a thing. I was buying Yules next. Um, that's because it's really nice to have uh, more mana regen. And the other thing is that um, I need a way to potentially buy myself time to get out of danger if needed. And Yules is a really good way to do that. So kind of wish I went Bloodstone. I think Bloodstone would have been probably better overhaul. Just because I would have had so much more mana regen over time. But that said, though, I don't really have that much int, so maybe it wouldn't have been very useful. Because the the mana regen it provides is also kind of dependent on your int, and I'm not getting much int, so I'd be spending like five thousand on an item that doesn't even give me intelligence. So maybe something like Yules does make a lot more sense. This is uh, Ursa using his ultimate here. If you look at his build, though, he doesn't really have. In fact, Ursa is a relatively crappy agility game compared to his strength, so his illusions actually aren't even that great. I forgot that he had eggs. I guess that makes sense. That's why he got phantasms, because it lowers the cooldown of uh, his ultimate. I guess that makes it a lot better. This makes it a uh, much better build, actually. Because at least this way he can cast it on allies as well to save them, potentially. So, kind of cool, I guess. Still wouldn't necessarily call it ideal, but... Buying dust here, because I should always carry it. There's no reason for me not to. I accidentally cancel canceled my TP, I remember. There's our bounty hunter doing a lot. Interesting direction to run. I increased my mana regen by a pretty huge amount. Pretty big. Yeah, this one. Which one look like Echo Stomp? Or 
I really don't even think that guy even needed to get uh, Maelstrom. He could have gone just like Deso or something, I feel like. Feels very nice that I can just two spell, blow a wave away. TP away, always TP into trees. That way it's harder for people to catch you. Don't care that much about missing like one last hit like this. The reason we have a net worth advantage now is because we're finally catching up in terms of uh, um, farm rate and we're just killing people way more often. These guys are not coordinating very well to look for kills. They have the potential, but it's they're not doing very much. Duel's there to buy myself a little time. So hypothetically, uh, I can tell there's a Radiance on me. There's an invisible hero here. Yeah, there's the, the clinks. Going back to base is usually the best move, just because you can heal and get back into the fight a little bit faster. Oh, I forgot to slow ring here. It's just 100 wasted mana. And I don't think I should have Yules in there. That was a mistake. Also, nobody else came with me, which I don't really blame them very much. I remember this moment now. My second one. Oh, that's right, I can dust twice in a row because I'm a tinker. I did get out without dying at least, so that wasn't all bad, but... A couple things like forgetting to use Soul Ring completely changes... Um, completely changes your ability to get a kill or not. Either way, I think he has a hood or something. No, he's just survivable. He does get a magic resistance perk later, but... How much status resistance? Resistance to have 13.5, not that much. Sold my wand because I realized I hadn't used it in forever and I really didn't need it sitting there. And what did I buy? I think I went for sheep stick at this point. Pretty sure. Gave me like 1.5 mana regen per second. Well, nice. Could have waited one second for the static remnant, or for the, yeah, static remnant instead I cast for your arm. The reason I'm getting Hex is just because it's a range disable. Um, I mean, I can already do a lot with Aftershock, but um, more int and uh, more mana regen is really beneficial to have, so I felt justified getting it. Again, I maybe should have gone Orchid instead, just to get myself more, more right-click. Another thing I have to worry about is that Bounty Hunter has an evasion perk at 25. It gets 50% evasion, so if I went Orchid and then went um, Bloodthorn, for example, then I could still right-click him rel reliably. The Sven's build, I think, was off as well. I talked to him about this um, in the, the post-game lobby, but he focused too much on ways to farm, when in reality, I think his build was good enough. He could have just gone around getting kills. Like, he's got Cleave now, and that's great and all, but between Reality Rift, Reality Rift, which lowers armor, and Enchant Totem, which gives you a big damage bonus, and Grave Chill, which helps you chase, and his ultimate, which gives him damage bonus, I feel like he very simply could have just... Um, like, I, I feel like he could have simply and consistently just gone around ganking people and gone more of a single target build, something like um, Desolator, maybe. Uh, Armlet's good because you get bonus damage based on how much strength you have, and Enchant Totem really benefits from that. But I think this guy's build was too farm heavy, for example. A lot of their, I mean, a lot of their players basically focused heavily on farming. This guy needed to focus on ganking. This guy needed... Uh, better items, like Bloodthorn makes sense and all, but he's like so late at getting it, and why I even have, I feel like having Maelstrom in addition to the Mystic Snake just doesn't feel very good to me. Um, this guy's build, same thing. He had two ganking abilities, and he could have just gone around ganking with them and been really effective in that way, but instead he gets Great Cleave, which is fine, and then he focuses very heavily on uh, trying to get kills with it. Tried to blink there, but got interrupted by the Radiance Burn. Rearming so I can blink back in. Used everything a little bit late here. Did get Yules though. This looks very bad. That was pretty slow by me. Need to Yules here. Probably should have done before blinking. 
Because then they could see where I was. But. Clinks's build is kind of interesting. Um, I wish that he would have gone power treads. I don't think there's any reason to just sit on boots of speed the whole game. Kind of. I think it's a mistake. With that said, though, he's also got a lot of attack speed from strafe, so it's kind of justified. Um, he went Shadow Blade so that he could initiate kills a little bit easier. I don't think that's terrible either. Hurricane Pike also kind of covers that same need a little. It's got a lot of extra attack range, at least. I think I remember he grabbed Janata first, I feel like. If I'm remembering correctly, I don't remember. I don't feel like that's very strong. Very strong of a play. I'm trying to put this in my uh, backpack. There we go. Or my stash. Just so easy to punish when you have a hero like Tinker slash Elder Titan that can always be where there's a gank. And because I have Blink, I can always catch up, and I'm fast because the Boots of Travel. And I'm almost always going to have a Dust ready to go. Which makes life easy. So I'm up to 20 mana per second now. HP is really good, because I have high strength gain on this hero. I probably should have pushed one more wave. Yeah, there it is. I felt that here. Pretty big mistake there. Um, not chain stunning. Uh, the reason I'm using is because it lets me remove. Did I remember to slow here? Forgot to soul ring. So I missed a lot on him just now. He ends up killing me in the end. If I had soul ring that one time, I feel like I would have killed him. Um, if I. I guess it's worth using Side of Ice. The weird thing about using Side of Ice is it's in some ways not worth it. Because it disables him for three and a half seconds. But I could use that mana probably to cast like a static remnant instead, which does like 400 magic damage and stuns it for one and a half seconds. So even using like Side of the Ice there didn't feel very good. But a lot of the issue came down to the fact that he had 50% evasion. It was hard for me to kill him. This guy's abilities are ruined. Our shaker is actually a very good late game. Fifty ma fifty percent magic resistance is insane. It's very good. Uh, I guess he has a wasted perk at twenty. Is the only downside, but. I forgot he had death pack too, I didn't even notice the whole game. He was a lot more about like standing near people than right clicking though. Radiance is a really good way to take a build that sucks damage wise and make it good. Because it does damage by staying alive and there's a lot of perks that can be used um, just to stay alive kind of a thing. Skeleton walk's a really good ability, makes you super fast and invisible. Really good thing. Like if he should be using Reality Rift as well to lower the armor brush. Oh, there he is. I guess all this regen kind of offsets what the armlet's doing. That's also the Morbid Mask, I guess. No, Manta's not the way either. This doesn't make sense build-wise. He should all be about increasing his his uh, single target damage. Yeah, there's me. Let's go back to see how this led up. I think we saw that there, Roshin is what happened. We scanned them or something. I saw the ward, but... I'm checking to see what his BKB timer is. Moving, uh...
Somebody else got the gem. They got the cheese as well. That's my fault. I don't want to blink right in front of his face because it's more obvious that I'm coming. This time I was a lot more careful to make sure that he didn't get his uh, BKB off. Focusing way more on uh, stun duration. At this point I basically felt like if I push out bottom it was the safest thing to do. It looks like we're already going to be successful in the base, so... Pushing over here felt good. Oh yeah, I have to go to day 9 show really soon. I should probably message him. Hello. Hello. Well, anyways, this game pretty much kind of closes up from here. It's just a lot of like chain stunning and people dying. Um, I didn't realize the game was so long, but uh, I'm going to get going. Um, if you want to watch the game, you can check the replay. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey, everyone's dead. <laughs>